The Royal Horticultural Society have said we are in crisis. The industry is lacking youngsters coming through. This is Eggleston Hall Gardens and over the next 12 months we're going to take you on a journey of what it's like to run a nursery garden. Week 4 in January and there are buds on these it's weeping prunus, the uh, flower and cherry, chills weeping. They're just starting to swell. Early. But the beds are starting to fill up now. We continue on with perennials. We continue on with shrubs. I've got a lot of irrigation to sort out. Uh, it's an ongoing thing to try and set up the irrigation before we actually uh, get into spring. This tank here, that's a, a holding tank. It holds 14,000 litres of water. On a summer's day, I can get through three of those quite easily. The water we use is extracted from a borehole. The borehole is in, in the field over there. And we had to go down, I think it was about 95 meters underground to get to the underground aquifers. Plenty of rain here, plenty of water, but getting to it was, was quite difficult. But uh, you can't rely on mains water. And, and why would we want to use treated water? It's such an an unenvironmental thing to do. You know, what's the point of treating water just to stick it on plants? So we can have it straight out the ground. We have it tested once or twice a year, even though we're not drinking it, just to make sure there's no, no real metal contents or anything in it. The early flowering plants are starting to come to life a little bit. Here you have pulmonarias, the lungworts. Lungworts, they used to use it for pulmonary lung diseases. I don't think it actually worked, but there wasn't much science around hundreds of years ago when it got its name, so there we are. Trilliums are not really showing through the leaf mold. Let me try a little bit of this. Really, my favourite complaints is Amazon. Look at this. A bloody great box here. Look at this. Right. Loads of paper. Here we go. Loads of paper. Feet of paper. And what have we got inside the box? Some plastic cable ties. Well, that's fucking environmentally friendly, isn't it? Yeah. The hydrangea paniculatas. Some things it's worth before you prune them back, just leaving it till most of winter's gone and then pruning them back. We do these in March, although we'll probably end up doing them a little bit earlier. Lilacs. These are shrubs that we haven't sold one year, so we've moved them up and they haven't sold the next year. Eventually they get bigger and then some we keep back so that we can get specimen plants. These are pots of delphiniums. Nice big name varieties. I intend to put out in the border if I get time. They are quite spectacular specimens. Uh, 
and this is the shade hall. Now here you it was a mess before. Just take a look at this. Here are the old type sprinklers that nurses have been using for years for irrigation, well for spray irrigation, top irrigation. These are like risers or uprights if you want. And they come off of a, a pipe that's led from a, a central tap. Now these drippers spray out about 120 litres per minute, which is a lot of a lot of water. But they're also quite close together because the field of which they spray, the diameter of the circle, isn't that great. They, they form a, a mass. So you're using up lots and lots and lots of water. Most of it runs off. Um, you, you see, if you get an excess of water, it's hitting the leaf, it's hitting the ground. And if it's not slowly trickling into the plant, it just runs off. So you get this runoff. So it's a massive waste of water and it's very hard to get the timings right because you can overwater plants way too easily. Irrigation is so important. I keep explaining to people that one of the hardest jobs in the, on the nursery or in the garden is watering. Any, any fool can put water onto pots, but knowing how much and how much a plant uses and needs is, uh, it takes years of experience and it's very hard to get right. I've probably said that before, but it's a, a big thing of mine because overwatering loses us far more plants than underwatering. And the other thing that we're trying to change this year is these wooden uprights for years because they're cheap and cheerful and you can just bang one in. These are just, uh, they rot off. They last about five years. So we're trying to use steel now because these posts now are, are a couple of quid, a couple of pounds each. And uh, wood is very expensive and although it's renewable, there is also recycled metal that we can use. I'll show you. I'm going over to an Australian system. Now the Australians, because of their water problems, have come up with some really, really good water saving sort of methods. And it's been forced on them and it's going to be forced on us all. We're lucky in this country. We can still, to a great extent, take water for granted. Um, guys, fingernails. <laughs> what um, for? Because I got nail polish. Oh my godmother, because she wants me to be more girly. So I'm going to, in the summer, paint Do you want to be more girly? What? Do you want to be more girly? Dunno, but I think the lads need to be more girly. They look so pretty. <laughs> you don't think I'm wearing fucking nail varnish? Oh, you're a beautiful girl. Fuck off. So what we have to do, or what Jan is doing here, is scraping up some of the, before we can pressure spray it, there's a lot of liverwort. Liverwort's a little bastard. It, it's, uh, as the ground gets wet, it sticks in. Now there are chemical applications you can play, but it's used, but it's mostly been banned and we never used it anyway, because it was pretty nasty stuff. So it just scrapes it up. This has to be done every year. And then it's scraped up like this into heaps. And then you get somebody like girly Clara here to come over and sweep it up. And then once that's those two processes are done. Oh God, there's customers. Once those two uh, processes are done, it can be pressure sprayed and pressure washed. Mm. There you are. Look nice and clean for summer. And then in summer, they'll, all this will be filled with plants again. Yeah. And it'll look lovely. Look. Yeah. I shall hold you to that. So that's the before and the after. All of the algae, the liverwort has all been cleaned off. Lisa has uh, sprayed off the paths. So it looks fresh. It's inviting. I just have a new irrigation system to put in. I'm just waiting on some parts and then 
we can re-establish this. Uh, so what I've got here, it's one of the winter stem rubus. This is one called rubus tibetanus. And it's not the one cockburnianus, it's tibetanus. And see here, it's still got that nice, lovely white sort of plume on the stems in winter. It's the only reason I imagine people would grow them. But anyway. Bloom or plume? Plume. Bloom. What is it? That's it's a bloom. A bloom. That's a bloom. That's a plume. It's a bloom. Yeah, so we just had this one plant left in a big pot, and what I've done, just like I normally do with a perennial, really, I've just divided it. You split it up. You can do that with most of the shrubs, really, that are either suckering or what you'd say form a thicket, like Rubus, Carrier, Goltheria. We've even done it here in the past with Spirea, and it seems to work quite nicely. So, just flip this one up. So, I mean, this one plant is probably going to give us a dozen, hopefully. I mean, you'll see, but what I'll probably do in, well, before too long, really, I'll cut these down and then we'll obviously get with the majority of the rubus you'll get these new shoots coming from the bottom yeah it's uh, they're a bit uh, like a blackberry you cut down the previous flowering stems and keep the current ones yeah they're nice mm. we like the cockburnie anus though but the polite way of saying it is coburn as in Cockburns, you don't say Cockburns Port, you say Coburns Port. <laughs> Look at her, she's the shoulders going, she's trying to snigger. That is just so juvenile. God, I enjoyed that. You are kidding. Oh, no. I'm not letting you put that on. You're not putting that on. The time to set up new irrigation is obviously not in summer when you actually need it. The time to do it is 
once you're on top of a lot of the nursery work you can uh, start applying yourself to it now as I've said I'm replacing the old system in here it comes from our irrigation comes uh, underground from the tank and it comes down to these central points this is just for this area and we can turn each line on from here now I'm putting in new lines these are the metal uprights these are the individual taps to turn a line off a line is a, a a section where you have some sprinklers and they go along well in a line that's why we call them lines at the base of them we put the pipe this is a, a tap so that you can turn the line off and of course the, the modern Australian sprinklers have a, an individual tap that you can turn off as well this uh, control you can't have enough control because when you're putting out lots and lots of different plants some have different water requirements and you can't have separate places for them everywhere so things that require a lot of water are very often next to things that require very little um, this gives us a bit more control over the individual watering so I'm just putting in these uh, uprights at the moment and then I'll put these pipes along and I'll show you how we put in the sprinklers to the to these feed lines this is probably not very interesting to most people but it's the most essential part of the nursery if we had to water this by hand we would just have well we couldn't do it we couldn't make a profit it would be so labor intensive and these days you know you 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 try and pay as you know years ago you used to get away with paying peanuts to people but now we have thankfully and I'm really pleased about it is we have a, a living wage although in the UK we have two living wages we have the national living wages of the governments and one that's done by the living wage foundation which I believe is part of the Joseph Roundtree Trust and uh, they recommend uh, a living wage as well which is what we try and stick to I need to take my I need to take my hat off for this because my head gets my head hurts explaining things so we need to put uprights in first now I, need, I put mine about nine feet apart As I've explained to you, um, these are steel posts. They're eight millimeter steel, and I'm starting using them at 120 centimeters. Now, I find you, you can measure it what the height that you need for the risers. That's the thing that carries the water up but I go about halfway up my flies. I know that looks pervy, but it's just handy. And if you don't have a, you don't have to carry a tape measure around with you then. So that's those, that's how we put those in. This is the supply line. This, as I've said before, is cable tied to there. The equipment, the irrigation equipment that we use, if, uh, my cameraman can come around here. It's quite simple. It's bayonet fittings. You have uh, you have pipe. Now some of you are going to find this really geeky and boring. There's no smuttiness in any of this. I have to tell you, it's just geeky, nerdy stuff. That's the supply pipe. We use 20 mil. You can use 16 mil. It depends how much water you're going to carry. Sometimes I put in a tap to connect two pipes. Um, as as we did over there you can probably see there's a tap so I can turn off that line um, it's all about controlling the water flow we need to be able to the more control you have the better so they just connect like that We're, we will connect one in, in a minute what you also need is uh, 
if you've run out of pipe or you've just got little bits that just connects two piece, pieces of pipe together these are elbows they're for going around corners like I need to go around this corner here I can put that in and the pipe goes away at a right angle this is a t-piece so that you can run two pipes one way so you can build up a whole network this is what they call a reducing T. If you want a thinner pipe coming off of a thicker pipe, although, you know, I'm told thicker pipes are better. Yep. That's it. Now, these, these taps turn off and on like that. Now, this is, again, it's a bayonet connector. And the bayonet connectors are really good. But, as you'll see in a minute, we do need to fix them. While they will stay on the pipe, if you get high pressure they can come off and that's really frustrating and can cost you a fortune in unwatered plants so we put one of the most expensive things of the whole setup is the jubilee clips over the top and that works well these are little taps if you're running up to an outside tap you can use these in in outside gardens just ordinary home gardens um, these come in different threads male and female threads if you're not sure what that means the female thread is on the inside of the fitting and the male thread is on the outside but you know just think like that really threads on the female and the threads on the male that way I don't know why I think of it like that but that's just the way I learned it and of course you need the risers now I've explained that these are an Australian system and they just come in pieces like this and you connect them together they just twist together it really is a very very clever simple to put in system and that's like that and that gives you the riser that carries the water from the supply pipe up to the distribution and you can have different distributions I use these little sprinklers and again they have an individual tap on that you can turn off and on again you just screw that in like that it is just as simple as that and then you need a little screwdriver one with a, a cross a really small crosshair uh, type and if you come over here All we do then is make a little hole in the supply pipe here just to get us a start and then this just screws into the hole you just have to push it in a little bit to start with some people like to use a pair of pliers but because they're not used to uh, twisting things with their fingers but I, well they don't like the discomfort but I don't mind and that's it you put a little cable tie on there and maybe on there and that's your sprinkler and we'll have a line going up here of five and that will water that bed absolutely beautifully there is nothing like hand watering but there are times when you just simply do not have the time in, in high summer the reason why we use a, a little cross haired one if you use a flat head and push that in it leaves a it makes a little slit rather than a hole and that can that can um, spread that you know it can sort of carry along and you end up with a leak so a, a little cross head really small one just to give you a start now I'll show you how to put in quite simple this is a, a flexi driver which we use for the Jubilee clips so we'll take this one here you need some boiling water some really really hot water if you try and push them in when the pla plastic's cold it, it's 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 a it's a fucking terrible job um, but if you just uh you can always dip your pipe in the water no thomas no no. You can always dip your um, supply line in the water, just push that in and then 
and then we'll tighten that up. It really is important to put the Jubilee clips on. If it's just a home supply, it really doesn't matter. You probably won't need the Jubilee clips and you'll save a fortune because they're fucking expensive. <laughs> Sorry about the puffing and grunting. I think my belly's getting in the way. So that's that and then I'll supply, I'll add another pipe and we'll go up and make a line up there and this will be another thing. The other thing we can do is put them on timers to come on automatically in the height of summer. But the other important thing is when you get to the other end of a line, if you don't put a plug in there, you, uh, it's really important because the water is just going to come flying out the end of the oh, really? So when you've got a line, you need to seal the end up. And we use these end plugs or what some of the smuttier people call butt plugs and we just get that in there dip that in the hot water you put your jubilee clip on it doesn't matter so much you know, but always put your clip on first there's nothing worse than getting your bayonet fitting on and you haven't got the clip on now that little butt plug end plug sorry will stop the water flying out the end so there you are we have a complete manual of how to put in basic irrigation oh, come and film it again when, when I've done it all right now we've taken out all the wooden posts what we do try and do is hand water where we can and if we have time. Sometimes things just have to have hand watering. Um, when you've got paths up here, paths, and you've got plants either side, there's nothing that pisses you off more than pulling a hose around because you're not. So we just put these wooden posts in so we can just drag the hose and it doesn't carry across and knock all the plants' ass over it. So that's why they're there. You can buy some fancy things with rollers on. We tried them and they, to be honest, they were fucking useless. The, the hose kept flying over the top. That's all I've got to say on that. We've been wandering past here on our way to the potting shed and there's a lovely smell coming out, which you can't smell because it's a camera. And these beasties. Sarko Cocker. And these funny little flowers smell absolutely beautiful. But it's, if it's really cold, they don't. You do need a bit of warmth in the air. It's evergreen, which everyone likes. It flowers, which everyone likes. Doesn't like a lot of sun, we found with time. We had a bit of a job to find out where they do best. There's a few different varieties. This one's quite nice with a big long leaf. This is winter gem, Hookeriana. It really is quite smelly in here, even though I've got sinking coal. Then you get the likes of this one, which is Confuser. And now these jelly little blackberries. It's probably poisonous. Just don't eat them. And they're just nice little things, just shoving a corner by your front door or something, so you smell them in winter as you come into your house when it's a horrible day. That's what I like to see, Liz. Enthusiasm. What's this one? Lots of little blackberries. I don't know quite why we've got berries and flowers at the same time. But um. Oh, because now it eats the berries and the flower now. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's about it, really. So it's taken most of the day. But, there is the new shade hole with a much more slimline irrigation system in. I think it will work well. Well, I know it will because I have it elsewhere on the, uh, on the nursery. But I do need to show you one other form of irrigation. We might as well put all this geeky stuff into one video 
all together. You need to see drip irrigation. Now these, this is drip irrigation. We've done the sprinklers and it's just basically a, a thin line coming off of the main supply line. Um, it's usually five millimeter. You can get, there's all sorts of weird and wonderful types of dripper. If you have a close up of this, um, very often they're color coded and that refers to the amount of water that they, they drip. Um, most of ours are drip at around two liters an hour. So if we have it on for a half hour, we know we're gonna get one liter. For bigger plants, there are drippers that go four liters and eight liters an hour. But we try and keep our trees together. So you just put the drippers into these lines. You can, they don't have to be up high like this. They can be on the ground. The easiest way of showing you how it's done get a little bit of blank pipe. Yeah, here's a little lots there. Oh lots these are old dripper lines that we can pull out and use as we want. But unless you have a filter on the system you have to be very careful because a little bit of dust or grit can really um so that puts a hole in the this line. is going to put a hole in now we're going to just put that over there like that squeeze it and that will put a hole in there. There we go. Then we put our assembly. We just make this up of various parts and we just put that in there. And then just push that in there. It's much easier when the line is in place. Um, there we are, that's gone in there. Rather than loose and flapping around like this. There we are. This is actually a, this tool is actually a punch as well. So you could actually punch the hole in and then you see there you can punch the hole in but it's actually I find it very hard and this is uh, just so much easier clip it over squeeze it together done rather than busting a bollock with that so there you are that is drippers and they are an absolute godsend like this one yeah what do you mean well. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Are you sure? It's hard, isn't it? Wait, my hand, my hands are slipping. Are you sure? You, don't you need this post? No, it's coming out. Bollocks. There we go. My hands are a bit sloppy. <laughs> I'm really sick about that. I was going to show you a different way of getting a post out if they're stuck. Or twisting it. No. <clears throat> if I can. I don't know. Well, it'll break off otherwise. We don't want it. We want to get the whole thing out. Okay, there's another way. <laughs> there's another way of doing this. What we're going to do, because it's quite... quite stuck this post, we're going to use a, a method of getting a post out that often works is by getting a bit extra leverage on it. So we're just going to tie a little bit of uh, rope around there. A brick or a stone put nearby. And then we're gonna slide this. You can use a pole or a, a post or anything. And you just put that through there. Put it right through. 
and get the tip over the brick. Now, Clara, you come round here in a minute and lift that post up. All right? Okay. Lift this. Lift uh, up? Yeah, and that should give you some extra leverage on the post. Okay. This bit. Just lift it from the end. Oh. Oh wow. That's very easy. Oh. And that is how you get extra leverage on a post. There we go. All right. Yeah. Well, that wasn't too much. Can you get that straight big pole from between your legs before you damage yourself? <laughs> Bloody hell. So what I'm doing here, it's just all these shrubs on this bed and those two beds up there were all young plants last year they either came to us as liners which is basically year old cuttings or some of them were plants that we propagated ourselves and obviously buying them early last year growing them on to be our stock for this year so all I'm doing really I'm just tidying these plants up because when they were freshly potted they should be quite happy for another year in this pot I'm just giving them a bit of a feed as well so I'm taking all this shoulder off getting rid of any weed and trying to get rid of any weed seed on these this is a shrubby honeysuckle Lanisra syringantha so it's a bit more well it's a bit tidier than the typical climbing forms even though it's still a bit of a sprawling thing but it really does have a nice flower it's commonly called the lilac flowered honeysuckle obviously syringantha got syringa in the name but you can already see these it's only really late january and they're already actually starting to come out into bud which i mean they should hopefully be fine but you never know if we get any late half frost we could have a few problems on same with these winter flowering viburnums as well, the viburnum bodden and tents, you can see them already starting to unfurl the leaves. But really by now they should only just be swelling up. The Lonicerous Syringantha has a, it's quite a, a scented thing as well. Mm. Yeah. And the things that we are finding this time of the year now is the yeah, it is this warm weather it shouldn't be like this Thomas was in his shirt sleeves yesterday t-shirt oh well that's another week done I suppose another week older no bloody wiser at all. I'm doing English literature, but Thomas is hidden away because he can't do the, the tongue twisters. There he is, grab him. Thomas, don't run away. Come on. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm innocent. I'm not being seen to be immature. We're trying to educate these youngsters in the English language by using tongue twisters like I slit the sheet, she slit me, slit them was a sheet that was slitting by me. Or the one, another one my father taught me was Mrs. Tucker Pucky's got a square cut punt, not a punt cut square, but a square cut punt. Now, now, your turn. Now. Your turn. <laughs> Go hey, Mrs. Hey, Tucker's hey. Pucky's got a square cut punt, not a punt cut square, but a square cut punt. That's it. You just need to speed. Yeah, faster. No, no, no. no. <laughs>